The diurnal birds of prey are a favorite group of many birders, and it's easy to see why. They combine grace, beauty, and power into a truly compelling package. You'll often hear birds of prey referred to as raptors, a name which denotes limbs designed for seizing animal prey. The talon toes of hawks certainly qualify. Note that owls, members of an unrelated order, are raptors in this sense too. Vultures, who have no need of immobilizing their food, are often informally grouped with the hawks. They certainly resemble diurnal raptors in size and shape, but they differ in other important ways. Some authorities have suggested that New World vultures and condors are more closely related to storks than to hawks, eagles, and falcons, but the point remains controversial. The largest family of raptors, the Accipitridae, includes a lot of things called hawks, but also the osprey, as well as eagles, kites, and harriers. When people casually use the term hawk, chances are excellent that they're referring to the red-tailed hawk which is ubiquitous in North America. If not, they probably mean one of its close relatives in the large genus Budio, which includes red-shouldered and broad-winged hawks, to name just two. Look through the Budios and their allies, and you'll find some pretty unusual adaptations. The zone-tailed hawk is southwestern in distribution, feeding largely on lizards and similar prey. Generally uncommon, it further conceals itself by perpetrating a very convincing ruse. It imitates the turkey vulture, with a similar plumage pattern and a spot-on rendition of the turkey vulture's V-winged, wobbling flight. Apparently, potential prey animals are less disturbed by the silhouette of a familiar and non-threatening turkey vulture, so the zone-tailed hawk uses its disguise to gain the drop on them. Eagles, of course, are huge, with broad tails, massive bills, and large heads. Our two species of eagles are related, but not as closely as you might think. The golden eagle is a representative of the so-called true eagles, while the bald eagle is a fish eagle. They differ significantly in habitat preference, prey, and shape. The osprey is sometimes called a fish hawk or a fish eagle, reflecting its passing resemblance to both. However, it's not really either, so ospreys are placed in their own subfamily. Their long, curling claws and rough-soled toes are ideal for snatching live fish from the water. Exhibitors are short-winged, long-tailed hawks of woodlands and hedgerows. Extremely agile flyers, they do not hesitate to plunge into dense cover in pursuit of birds, their principal prey. The northern harrier, still informally called marsh hawk by many, is indeed a hawk of the marshes and other similar open habitats. Its white upper tail coverts are a classic field mark, as is its long tail, which is usually carried folded. Its narrow wings are held aloft in a V-shape as it hunts. Northern Harriers are one of our more obviously dimorphic hawk species. Adult males are gray, adult females brown. Young of both sexes have a rich butterscotch color to their underparts. Kites are probably our most heterogeneous subgroup of raptors. While few birds truly merit the term unmistakable, the swallow-tailed kite is awfully hard to confuse with anything else. Supremely confident in the air, it plucks snakes and other prey from the treetops. At the other end of the kite continuum is the comparatively gawky hook-billed kite, which mostly stays within the forest canopy, where it feeds on snails. Our other family of raptors is the falcons, noted for their speed and flying skills. The odd man out among them is surely the crested caracara. Its long legs, stout bill, and fondness for carrion seem to place it with the vultures, rather than with its sleek, agile cousins. The jeer falcon is the largest and most arctic of all its tribe. It comes in a wide range of colors, from nearly pure white to blackish. Gray individuals are most numerous among those few that wander south of the tundra each winter. Our smallest falcon, the colorful American kestrel, hardly seems intimidating, but ask a field mouse, vole, or grasshopper, and you might get a different perspective. As delightful as the diversity of raptors is, it can make field identification a challenge at times. In our next podcast, we'll take a look at some simple ways to increase your skills with this exciting group.